Good Shepherd Sermon for Sunday, May 15th, 2022. Pastor John Milkey. Good Shepherd Lutheran Church and School is located in Wisconsin Rapids, Wisconsin, in the United States. Our mission is simple and bold. We seek to grow in faith and knowledge of our Savior Jesus. We want to make him known to others so that they too may share the joys that Jesus has won for them. Here's Pastor. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Ascension is one of those hidden festivals. Maybe Christians know about it, maybe they don't. We all know about Easter. We all know about Pentecost. That's coming up. We all know about Christmas. But Ascension is kind of like, huh. Ascension is like uh, icing on a cake. It's like the, the best of the best, and the best is yet to come. The disciples didn't get that, of course, so I'm going to read to you again what Jesus tells them so that they can be assured, as you and I are assured, that there is a great plan being worked out for our salvation and the salvation of many others. From Luke chapter 24, <clears throat> Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses and prophets and the Psalms. And then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said to them, this is what is written. And so it must be that Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Look, I'm sending you what my father promised, but stay in the city until you're clothed with power from on high. He led them out as far as the vicinity of Bethany. He lifted up his hands and blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he parted from them and was taken up into heaven. So they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. They were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our defender. You know, as we read these words, it's, it's wonderful words. We sometimes forget how these words were first spoken. The living Lord Jesus Christ, who had just conquered death, was appearing to his disciples. He had not yet ascended to heaven. And what was he doing? He was meeting with them for 40 days, again and again, doing miracles, preaching, teaching, letting them touch. Yes, yes, I really am real. I'm not a ghost. He would sit down and have fish and chips with them. It's a wonderful thing that was going on. So then what happened? Oh, it worked. <laughs> One of the things that happened was is they remembered who it was that was telling them these things. He says, I'm going to be gone, and he's right in front of them. Jesus is telling him these words. Jesus does not want them to be afraid. Jesus doesn't want them to worry. Where was that God who was in the tomb? He was right in front of them. Now, when things go around in this world and they go badly in this world because that's how Satan wants things to go bad, we sometimes have the same questions, don't we? When school children are shot up by a stranger, we sometimes wonder, where, where is God? When planes go crashing into skyscrapers, where, where is God? Where is my God, my God who defeated death where is he? Where is my God? Where is my God who spoke to Moses out of a bush that was burning and ever burning up? Where is that God? Where is my God who told Moses, a convicted murderer on the run, to go back to the country that was trying to kill him, 
and free God's people by going up to the leader of that country and saying, let my people go. Whoa. Yeah, where is my God? Where is that God that I serve? Where is the God who split apart the Red Seas when the army was running after me? Where is he? Where is my God? Where is that God who sent one angel into a lion's den because Prophet Daniel was in trouble? He didn't send him there to kill him or to kill the lions. He sent there to shut the mouths of the lions so the lions would not hurt Daniel. Where's that God? Where's that God who was with the three men in the fiery furnace? He didn't shut off the furnace. He was just with those men to assure them that he has everything covered. And did he have everything covered? <laughs> My goodness, when they, when they were called out of that burning furnace, the guys who examined them were just amazed because not only was there no blisters on their hands, their clothes didn't smell like smoke, and their hair was not singed. Where is that God? He was right in front of them, telling them he's going to be going away. And then with these words, he says, You are witnesses. I'm sending you what my father promised. Huh. What in the world is going on? Where is my God? I, I, want, I, want, I don't want you to go. I don't want any. I want you to stay. So as they're working all through all these questions, Jesus very quietly continues to teach them and us. I have a big job, far bigger than taking care of the Jerusalem Christians, far bigger than the county of Galilee. I paid for the sins of the whole world. I paid for the sins of all people of all time, from Adam and Eve in the garden until the last person whom God chooses to bring into heaven. And that's a big job. So I'm going home to heaven. I'm ascending to heaven, and I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit who will be with you to make sure that that job is carried out because that job continues. And my blessings Continue. So he's basically telling you it's time to get your faith, put it to work. Oh, how do you do that? As I was preparing for this, I, I ran across a really interesting little, little fact about some TV shows. There used to be a TV show called Who Do You Trust? And you would go up to somebody and you would choose one person and they'd say, Who do you trust? to answer a question about um, medical things. And then they could choose somebody. If I'm thinking, I would choose Kathy to answer that question about medical things. Who would you choose to answer a question about Bible things? Who would you choose? I say, I'm going to choose Pastor Valu. We're glad you're back, by the way, sir. Here's a Bible question. We all want to win, so get it right. Yeah. No, pressure. no pressure. There is this Old Testament prophet guy. He didn't like a whole bunch of people, one of them all dead, and God eventually wound up using a fish to swallow him alive and spit him out on land to do his job. What was that prophet's name? Jonah. Jonah. Not a hesitation. He knew. I went up to him because I knew that he knew, and I wanted us all to win, and we won. Thank you very much. Who do you trust? So here's Jesus, who just kicked death in the teeth. The Roman government had sentenced him to die, made sure he was crucified. Oh, no, we'll torture him first before he dies and then put him into a tomb, and then sealed up that tomb with a special seal of the Roman government. Nobody goes in this tomb. Didn't hold him back, because on day three, he had a promise to keep. God is the God who keeps his promises. 
So who are you going to trust? When God gives you work to do, who are you going to trust? If you put your trust in people, you're going to fall flat on your face because guess what? We don't do things right. We don't do things well. And it started way, way, way back when. Remember, Adam and Eve had one commandment. One. Don't eat from one tree. It's right there in the middle of the garden, right next to the other tree. Don't eat from that one, because when you eat from that one tree, you will surely die. And Adam and Eve disobeyed God. And we've been living in that terrible problem ever since. You never have to teach a child how to disobey. Here, let me show you how to throw a temper tantrum. Let me show you how to slam doors. Let me show you how to stick out your tongue when you're really upset. You don't have to teach a child any of that because a child knows by heart automatically I can disobey really good. I have told you this before. I used to slam the door, wait till the door was shut, wait till I heard my mom walk away from the door, and then I would stick my tongue out at the door. You didn't have to teach me that. What you have to teach is how do you show honor to the representatives that God puts in front of you to take care of you. What you have to teach is how God wants you to use your words to build up each other. What you have to teach is that your sins are way too big for you to ever, ever cover. You cannot do it. What you have to teach is that Jesus Christ, the world's only Savior, loves you so much and so completely that he went to a cross and he suffered and died. That's the same message that Jesus preached to his disciples while he's sitting right in front of them. Oh, what an amazing thing. Listen to these words one more time. You are witnesses of these things. Look, I am sending you what my Father promised. Can you trust him? Oh, yeah. I can trust Jesus. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. And he led them out as far as the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he parted from them, was taken up into heaven. So they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. They were continually in the temple courts, praising and blessing God. Amen. So that's what God wants us to do, to take his word out to the world when he sends that great promise. Guess what? God kept that promise. We're going to be celebrating that day pretty soon with the festival of Pentecost. If God kept that promise, you can trust him to be with you with the other part of the promise, to bless you. Now, we need that. We need God's blessing because when bad things happen, people turn on God They turn against him, and instead of being drawn to repentance, very often they go fighting God tooth and nail. Remember Adam and Eve again? Adam and Eve, they're caught red-handed by God. God's there in the cool of the evening. He's walking in the, in the garden of Eden, and he's looking for them. And he says, Adam, where are you? And Adam says, I was naked, and I was ashamed. I didn't want you to see me. So I hid. And what happens? God says, who told you you were naked? Did you eat from the tree I told you not to eat from? Well, Lord, it's that woman, and you gave me that woman, and she took some of that fruit, and she gave it to me, and... I ate it. So God walks over to Eve. Say, Eve, what is it you've done? And Eve says, The snake in the grass, he tricked me, and 
I ate it, and, and God, who created that snake anyway? Who let that snake into the garden? We have been playing that blame game ever since. And God says, stop it. Look in the mirror. The wages of sin is death. Your sin, your sin separates you from God. That's a terrible place to be. So what does God do? God says, you need to keep on reading because I took care of your problem with sin. You can't take care of it. You're by nature my enemy. So I decided to become one of you. Lived for you, died for you, came back to life for you. And by the way, I have a lot of people on my list that I went in heaven. And you are tasked with telling them. You don't have to do a thing. You don't create faith. But you need to share that wonderful good news that I have taken away all sin of all people of all time. And that gives you a peace that goes beyond human understanding. A peace that's rooted in heaven and bears fruit in my life, living for him. Inside your worship folder today, you see a couple of different things, all bright green. The reason why they're bright green is so I connect the two in your mind. I want you to know that on the one, the smaller one, is a little... A little brochure to help you understand about Acts chapter 1, verse 8, where he says, go to the whole world. And the other one is how you can do that here. You can take God's word and share it with somebody and invite them to come and worship with you. That's how the word goes out. So in Jesus' name, so let us live. Amen. And now may God's peace, which goes beyond all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts and your minds. In Jesus Christ our Lord, amen.